And now we have with us Dr. Fadi Asairan, General Manager of Blum Invest. He will be discussing investment banking, private banking, and the 331 circular in Lebanon. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Fadi. Uh, if you could, if you could uh, start with telling us how the business has been over the course of 2018. Well, I have to admit it was a very tough environment. I mean, uh, as you know, I mean, the whole region is, is in turmoil. I mean, well, except probably Egypt that has been uh, seeing some kind of uh, good results. Otherwise, the whole region has been affected. And in particular, Lebanon, uh, we had a tough environment. I mean, security-wise, it was fine. It was okay. Politically, we had an election. We had recently a government form. But I have to admit that it was a tough economic uh, situation. So, so it wasn't an easy uh, year. But nevertheless, it was fine. It was okay. All right. So as an investment bank, what were the major challenges you faced? I'm sure it involves all those that you've mentioned. Yes. But if you could uh, well, point out... Well, yeah, in particular, I mean, the biggest challenge, I think, was, okay, the environment of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. When you're facing this kind of uncertainty, definitely that puts you in a, in a, you don't know what to expect, how do you plan, how do you invest. I mean, these are horizons that are, should be clear. I mean, there is always uncertainty in life. However, when it goes beyond the normal, I mean, when you go, beyond the expect regular... what you expect. Yeah, yeah. It becomes tougher. That's one. Second, one of the major challenges is the slowdown also. The economic slowdown makes it also uh, not very conducive to business uh, investments, not conducive to, to jobs, to things like this. And I think one of the major challenges that has been affected also is the rising interest rates, in Lebanon particularly. That also makes it for both, whether on the investment bank side or on the uh, or on the uh, private banking side, a very tough because the alternative, you know, it becomes a little bit harder to be able to invest in alternative investment. So mm -hmm. interest rate rising, and over and above the rating of Lebanon, <coughs> the capital markets in Lebanon is small. Now add to that a de-rating or re-rating of Lebanon downward makes it even tougher for us to work in this kind of environment. So it was a tough uh, year and a lot of challenges. So how do you expect these things to play out this year? Look, definitely we are talking today in the midst of a major reform, reform hopefully being presented by the budget. Now, I have to really be very frank. If it comes out a good one, that's an opportunity for us to move forward. If not, unfortunately, it's going to be even tougher and it will impact us a lot. So we'll wait and see. Probably the coming few weeks will determine really what kind of outcome uh, Lebanon will, will face. Okay, so on the private banking side, can you tell us how the demands of your Lebanese clientele has changed over the past years? Well, of course, given the circumstances in Lebanon and in the region, well, apart, like I said, in Egypt, we've seen a lot of shift from the demand from either they kept deposits in Lebanon at higher rates or they shifted outside in terms of securities. In the U.S., we have a lot of customers, uh, you know, uh, work in the U.S., I mean, working, uh, trading in the U.S., or in Egypt. So two, two major uh, different countries, but mm -hmm. in emerging, that was probably one of the best, uh, you know, uh, outcome for us. And... Europe and the US, mostly on the equity rather than on the bond market, which is normal because the equity market has been a good one. Yeah. So we, we've introduced also several things on structuring products for our clients, depending on the, uh, their profile, things like that. So there are opportunities, but they have been shifting from a local market to international markets, mostly. Okay, so on that <laughs> note, how would you describe your pipeline then for 2019? No, I mean, okay. We're focusing on two things. First, on, on the family office. Uh, we're trying to establish a family office within the private banking uh, area so that will cater for a kind of different type of uh, businesses. And the second is uh, uh, to focus on structuring products because it's an environment where it is a low interest environment and the equity is doing fine. To combine it and do not do trade, to combine this kind of things, we can structure products and we've been doing this to be able to 
attract some kind of customers. That's the focus this year has been on that. Definitely, uh, we've also introduced a, a, a alternative investments in terms of real estate in Europe. So we've just launched a new product. It's called Kilvest Blom uh, Europe. In fact, this is the second one in Europe. First one was doing fine and very good. We're seeing another opportunities in investing in, in some investments in real estate investments yes. in Europe. So right. we're doing that. Which parts of Europe, if you could? Mention? Well, it's a different. Uh, it, it's it's a combination because we have several projects. One probably in, be in Belgium. The second one in Germany. The third one in in Spain. The fourth one in Italy. So it is all a, across the yes. board, basically. Okay, so. Um, Circular 331 has obviously had quite an impact on the Lebanese economy sure. over the past five years or so. So what uh, can you tell us more about the bank's activities following, following that implementation in 2014? And what are your plans for this area moving forward? Well, 331 has been a really uh, an excellent move, uh, you know, initiated by the central bank and to help the economy, to help entrepreneurship and to facilitate the ecosystem in Lebanon. Of course, like anything else, anything new, it has its pitfalls. We have seen some kind of, uh, you know, uh, failures. But on the overall picture, I think it was an excellent move. Now, the banks went and, you know, uh, put some money. In fact, we had a major, almost $200 million invested in equity in, in that has not happened in Lebanon at all. Mm -hmm. So in startups, which is great, but I think also it needs to be continued. The point is, my feeling is that this kind of uh, initiative need to be uh, taken to the level of a policy, government policy. So today we're discussing, for example, the budget. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think, you know, unfortunately, it's gonna be even mentioned as, as part of the policy. And this is what it should be done. So it's not only central bank, it's not only banks. It should be something, you know, a major policy initiative by, by the government to be able to move Lebanon from one place to the other. In any case, given that, still, we still hope for a continuation of the uh, initiative with all the changes, all the pitfalls that we have seen, try to modify and try to move forward, try to learn from our mistakes and see what can we improve. And I'm sure we're going to improve. Now, also, we get involved, not only the banks, I think also corporates need to be, to be involved because corporates need also this disruption of their industries is mm -hmm. there, it's coming. Whether they like it or not, the, the automation is coming, the digitalization is coming, the, uh, well, the, the artificial intelligence is there. So we need to embrace it as banks, as corporates, and as financiers. I don't think why we shouldn't. And, and I think this is our, in, in fact, if I have to think on a macro level, this is our way out. I mean, trying to solve our crisis in Lebanon mm -hmm. in terms of unemployment, in terms of productivity and all this, technology is there. And, and luckily enough, our people are fit. I mean, we have Talent. talents that can provide it. So, so we don't need anything but really a good conducive environment. Uh, environment to be able to do it. And that's where it is. Well, there is something else is a market. Unfortunately, also Lebanon is a small market. However, like all the time, Lebanese looks outside their market. And we should a little bit not restrict ourselves to saying the only thing that we need to do is to uh, sell Lebanon. We need to produce Lebanon, but we need to sell the whole world because that's what it is. And we need to really be able to understand that. Mm -hmm. And on that point, do you have specific plans as in, in place uh, well, in furtherance of the Circular 331? Yeah. Well, of yeah, course, uh, first we are involved by raising money for all the funds. Mm -hmm. We are investing directly with the funds directly from our own equity. What we are trying to do as well is help companies to raise money from outside mm -hmm. these startups. And also what we're doing as a bank, since the FinTech, because this is our specialty, I mean FinTech as a bank, that FinTech companies, we're looking at all of them, we're meeting with all of them, and we're using their expertise to be able to really disrupt, seeing how they can disrupt our industries and try to make use of it. Just to give you the example, we just hired one of the artificial intelligence company that has been in the 331, has been taking money. But as a bank now, so we've invested through the, the funds mm -hmm. in the company, but also we're using the company 
itself knowledge to be able to say how we can benefit as a bank right. from your knowledge. And this is where they are helping. So we're using everything else. We're embracing the technology, the 31. It's very fully. symbiotic relationship then between it you is. and it your is. investments. It is. All right. So last question. What is your outlook on Lebanon's financial market and economy for the year? And what are your expectations or projections? Well, okay, let me put it, the good thing about it as well, that this year we are bidding, in, in a month's time, we're bidding for a new electronic trading platform. So we led a consortium of banks in Lebanon and financial institutions to bid for the new electronic trading platform that will see the light probably by the end of the year. So we're bidding today, and I think the, uh, by the end of May would be uh, the final uh, bidding process. Now, whether we win or somebody else wins, which is fine, the new electronic trading platform will be set up. And that will, I think, will hopefully, will lead to also to a development in the capital markets. Now, we have in place a CMA. The mm -hmm. regulatory authority is there and is doing their job properly. What we need now is the infrastructure. We wished we could have uh, 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 privatized the Beirut Stock Exchange. Unfortunately, with all this policy, politics, and all this, it's gonna getting difficult. However, we have a role now to say, okay, if we cannot privatize, we can build something else. And we're building it, and we're building. So that will lead, hopefully, to a better infrastructure to be able to list companies, to list products, to have ETFs, well, to create a market. Of course, it's not enough per se, but at least we will have the regulation, we will have the infrastructure. It takes us also some kind of changes in the policy making and the mm -hmm. reform that will lead hopefully to a better uh, results. And definitely the capital market will be a major contributor to the economy the way it should be. It should be. I know I said that was the last question, but I have just one more. <laughs> On that note with capital markets, from, so from the inside, what, how would you describe the appetite for, um, sorry, investor appetite for Lebanese paper? Again, really, it depends, it depends on the macro today. Mm. There are good companies. There are good prospects. Good papers, yes. But the environment, the macro, really put a major shadow on our performance. So hopefully if this shadow is taken out, we were going to do fine. And I'm sure, I know for a fact that we always see investors, international investors. Mm -hmm. And they've been investing in, in our stock, for example, Blom, and other things. I mean, Solidaire used to be, Audi, but also on the government papers. So we had international investors, okay? But they are shying away since now quite a while, mm -hmm. since 2018, if you want to say yeah. it, because of this macro environment that is putting a, the downgrade. Overcast the, on. Yeah, I mean, and that needs to be really looked at. And that's, I think, the way we test, this is what I'm trying to say, the test will be now, if we have a good budget and good reform, which means that's going to be and the sentiment a major, will improve of course, then, major yeah. re, mm -hmm. because now we're cheap at these prices. We are very cheap, but the point is, it's cheap depending on which criteria. If we're gonna uh, not deliver, well, we're gonna always be cheap. But however, if we deliver, it means probably plenty of things and we're gonna benefit from it. That's the whole point. And definitely that means plenty of other uh, investor or, or cor corporates will issue, will, will, will issue papers, mm -hmm. will issue stocks and all this. So it's gonna be hopefully a good things for the capital. So you're market. optimistic. I am, I am, good. I do hope so. Very good. Do you have anything else to add on top of that? Thank you very much for your grace. Thank you for your time.